Hey guys, Pretzelman945 here. Welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I am finally reviewing something that took me a very long time to finish, and that is Bleach. I started Bleach back in May, and it took... Um, it took me a lot of breaks and a lot of time to finally finish it. But now that I'm fully caught up with it, including Thousand Year Blood War, um, I'm going to review it. Um, now I've thought a lot about how I want to structure this review, um, and I think the way I want to do it is by arc. Um, so... The, so, the first arc, uh, I don't know what the proper name of it is. It's like the Shinigami arc or something like that. Um, but the first arc, I think, um, does a great job introducing the power system. Um, the power system within Bleach is something that's incredibly interesting. Um, I think that we get a, a very nice introduction to all the main characters, such as um, Rukia, Chad, uh, or you, <laughs> uh, Ishi Ishida. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> uh, Ishida and um, Orihime. That was the other one. Um, um, and, uh, most importantly, we get an amazing introduction to Ichigo, who I think is a great protagonist, and, um, because I love his, like, personality nature, it doesn't feel too generic when it comes to shonen protagonists, um, but at, at the same time, he has, like, his personality quirks that make him feel very unique and interesting at the same time, um, and then, uh, I like what it sets up between the relationship between, um, uh, Soul Reapers and Quincy's, um, because it's going to be much more important later, um, so, um, I, again, not, not much to talk about with the first arc, because it's pretty short and to the point, but I thought it did a great job of introducing the world of Bleach, uh, so to speak. Um, I, I will be doing a Bleach characters tier list, so that way I can get more in-depth with the characters in, in that kind of format, I think. Um, uh, but next we have, um, an, uh, the best arc in all of Bleach, and it's not even close, and that is Soul Society. And, um, I will be making very soon a video of my top five favorite anime arcs, and I'll tell you right now, Soul Society is high on that list. Hmm. Excuse me. <sighs> because everything about this arc is, like, basically perfection. Um... The way the system of reishi and spiritual pressure is expanded upon is insane. And, um, seeing, like, how much the world seems to expand with this is, it's done such a cool way. Um, I love the team dynamics and everything like that. Um, and, like, and, and, I, and I, what I love about this that isn't really seen in any other part of the series is, like, um, this idea of where, like, you're not really sure whether the Soul Reapers, the rest of the Soul Reapers and the Captains are actually the good guys because of their, su su because of several of their morally ambiguous natures and actions throughout this arc, which is something I really find interesting because... It's such a subversion to expectations, and I really, really love that. Um, obviously, the fights in here are absolutely incredible. Um, so many of my favorite characters are captains from this arc. Like, 
We have um, Kenpachi, Byakuya, Aizen, and then um, my, my favorite character uh, that I recently got a figure of, uh, Toshiro, um, are all in this arc, along with uh, introducing, like, um, so many other, like, lieutenants. Um, it, it's crazy. Like, I think the thing that this arc does the absolute best is is balancing a massive roster roster of characters because um another one of my favorite characters introduced in in two another two of my favorite characters introduced in this are captains are like Jin and Tosin as well um but like. <laughs> Just seeing, like, both of them together, oh my god. Um, anyway, as I was saying, um, so, like, the balance of characters is by far the best thing, because, like, they manage to explore the nature of so many characters. You get to see the sadistically scientific nature of Kuritsuchi, the somewhat care carefree, like, flirtatious perverted nature of Kiraku, you get to see the seriousness um, of Byakuya. You get this. Um, you you get to see like the complete crazy madman that Kimpachi is. You get to see like what a menacing presence Gin is. Um. You get to see, like, what a cunning mastermind Aizen is when it's revealed that he's actually the main villain and he faked his own death to kill the Seirate, and I never saw it coming and it was completely insane. Um, and the fact that, like, Tozen and, um, Tozen and Gin were, like, co his co-conspirators was completely nuts in, like, the way that his part of the plot unfolded and how they all grew stronger throughout the arc and how, like, the world and the history of the Soul Society is built upon and, and also exploring Rukia as a character in this. Like, her backstory and what she feels guilty about and, like, um... The way that you can see through other characters like Toshiro and um, uh, Aizen's lieutenant, who I forget the name of. Um, and then seeing the, the connection between Matsumoto and Gin. There are so many backstories in this. It's insane. It's, it's, it's completely insane. Um, just seeing all the connections, because you see all these, like, formations that form, how, like, like when Renji, Rukia, and the rest of them formed when they were, like, friends in the Soul Reaper Academy, and then from there you're able to see, like, the machinations of Aizen that, that took place from a long time ago. Ugh, and, and then, um... Like, exploring the complex relationship of Tozen and Komomura, which is expanded later on, but it's introduced here, and I think that's really interesting. It's it's just so good! Uh, and, <laughs> and, like, exploring the culture of the souls and everything like that, and what happens, like, once they've been saved from becoming a hollow and purified and all that... And how they live their life and such. It's so interesting. Like, this arc, this arc is a goddamn masterpiece, honestly. Um, definitely one of my favorite anime arcs of all time, without question. Um, and then after that, we get, um, to what I would call the worst arc in Bleach, because Bleach doesn't really have bad arcs, but this was my least favorite. That's the Arnkar arc, or the Hueco Mundo arc, or whatever name you want to use for it. Um, because what I find hilarious about 
um, kind of switching topics for a second, but like people say that the Chimera Ant arc in Hunter x Hunter is so long and slow paced because that's 60 episodes. But the Arn Car arc, like, hold on, I'm gonna look up something. Okay, I just look it up. And that makes a grand total of 116 canon episodes. Um, so yeah, it... <laughs> not counting the filler, which I obviously skipped. Um, it... It has, um... It, it's so long that it just makes it kind of hard to get through, and it was this arc where I took a majority of the breaks I had with Bleach, um, just because it felt, at some time, at certain points, it felt so dragged out and long for no reason, um, also a big problem I have with this arc is it feels like the power levels were so wildly inconsistent like you have this idea that's set up kind of in the beginning where like an Arun car is like a captain level but then captains are able to be a spot of no problem and then you have the like issues like Yami or who is secretly um is spot in number zero, and despite initially being marked as number ten, and then the fact that like uh, as spot as like Stark Baragon, Baragon for some reason is not one, even though he's clearly the most powerful, and Holly Bell are more powerful than Okiora, which doesn't make any sense, and then. You have people call you have people like Sizella Poro, um, who are just completely like overpowered like their their fights are dragged on for way, way too long. Um and then you also have people like the the Primarion Espada, which causes Ichigo to have to pull out his hollow form, even though they're like formerly is spotted, which doesn't make any damn sense. Um. So, it's just those kinds of problems that kind of made it really hard to get through for me. Um, but that is by no means saying this is a bad arc in any way. There are so many amazing fights in this arc. Um, like, beyond belief um, there's, like, Ichigo versus Okiora, Ichigo versus Grim Joe, there's Byakuya versus whatever the number seven's name was, there's, um, Kenpachi versus Noitora, um, there's the, there's Ichigo versus Aizen at the very end, um, God, there, there, there's so many, like, just completely bonkers fights. There's Kiraku versus, and Ukataki versus Stark, which is also great. <clears throat> um, I love what this does for Ichigo as a character, too. I love the development of his hollow form. I think that's really unique. The introduction of the visor was also super interesting. Um, and I think my favorite thing about this arc as a whole, beyond like every episode with Aizen near the end being completely hype as shit, um, is the, um, the flashback. Which seems like it's interjected so randomly, but it might be, like, the most important backstory in all of Bleach to understand anything about what's going on. Um. So, in it, you have, um, like, <laughs> you have, uh... 
like you learn that that s- uh, several members of the visor used to be um actually squad captains uh which i always found to be extremely interesting and and you learn and you see how Urahara was a captain and he used to be the leader of the department of uh research and science or whatever it's called um and then all of them were betrayed by Aizen. <laughs> and, ah, oh, it does such a good job of making Aizen just seem like a completely hateable human. Oh my god. Um, Aizen is one of the best villains in all of anime, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, um... I was, I'm going to go more into this when I make my characters tier list, but, like, that entire backstory was absolutely amazing. I loved every bit of that. Um, now, moving on to a much shorter arc, but one that I loved so much, and that was the Fullbringer arc. Um, I love this I love this arc of being able to see Ichigo. Like, it, it provided this amazing new perspective on Ichigo as a character, um and how like like what 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 he what it happens when he doesn't have his powers i love that a lot i think it's great um it's it's so interesting and the writing for it is so good um and then seeing how the other characters accompany that and seeing how he's like manipulated by ginjo and that stuff i think his full bringer powers is awesome um and then the plot twist <laughs> where him and uh, uh, Tsukushima were the main villains all along and everything you do with the complete insanity of like him warping everyone's memories was absolutely crazy. Um, and then the final fight between everyone else and just seeing how they all got destroyed by Ichigo's allies and then Ichigo's final fight versus Ginjo mattering so much. It, it was it was just fantastic stuff. It was just like the reason why Bleach was so good in my mind. Um and then we get to Thousand Year Blood War, which is one of the most insane arcs I've ever seen. Um not only does it like completely bring back Quincy's with a bang. You walk as a cool villain. Um the fact that they the fact that like um the oh God what what is their name? The um The name of the Quincy General. I don't remember what their name is. Um the the just completely insane way that they can steal bankais, which blew my mind. Um, the fact that there's so much incredible character development with so many characters here. Um, like, oh god, I don't even, I don't even know. Um, uh, Kenpachi. Uh, Zaraki, like, learning that Unahana was the original Kenpachi and finally completing that character arc by having Zaraki kill her and fully obtain the title was awesome! That was so good! And seeing, like, the training arcs of, like, Hitsugaya and then, bro, bro, seeing the death of Yamamoto was just nuts! After his Bankai was so freaking powerful. But then we just get introduced to Squad Zero who are so awesome and they just completely wipe the floor with everybody. <laughs> I love Squad Zero. They're freaking awesome. I love every one of them. They're amazing. Um, dude, and Mbiakia in this was such a badass, this arc. Oh, and the fight with the modern animation was so good. Oh, and, and, and the epic music, too, was just amazing. Everything about Thousand Year Blood War was f- incredible, honestly. Um, and um, 
To kind of round it off, I'm going to talk about something that I didn't really mention in each arc that I talked about, but um, my absolute favorite thing about the way Kubo writes Bleach and the way Bleach is just designed in general is the way how, like, things are set up in the world and then they're brought back later. So, like, Squad Zero, for instance, is introduced in this Eisen flashback in the middle of the Arn Arc. It's just, like, mentioned one time. Um, and, and, and we might get name-dropped on things like the Oaken and the Soul King and everything like that. And then we get more information about the Soul King in Thousand Year Blood War, along with the familiar relationships that was established in the very first arc about the nature between Quincy's and, um... Uh, Soul Reapers. Um, and everything to do with that was just... Like, like the way that... And, for, and even in the Fullbringer arc, the way that, like, it's... I don't know if it's directly stated or if it's just implied, the way that Orihime and Chad's powers are that of Fullbringers is, like, such a neat resolution... And I just love the way that it introduces things, that Bleach introduces things and then comes back to explain them later by connecting it to the larger narrative. And I think it's easily the best aspect of Bleach's world building and storytelling. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Um, I've been thinking for a while um, how I want to do structure this and all that. Um, especially given my thoughts about Bleach, and I think my final thoughts are, um, it was a struggle in the best kind of way, I think. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye!